Okay. I just want to make sure we have enough light so you guys can see what's happening. Lori, how does that look light-wise? I'm waiting for Chantelle to jump on. She's usually my lighting director. Maybe we just move this over a little bit. And maybe go half. Still feels like there's some hot spots. This is good here, this lighting. And if I come in closer, it's just a little shiny right here. Thanks, Annie, and thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. All right. Just waiting for my girl, Chantel. All you see is a green screen. I should be up now, Julie. Just checking texts and things like that. All right, a little shiny. Okay, I'm gonna turn this light off then. Four o'clock is a tough time because the sun starts to go down and I want us to be in the dark. So maybe this is a little bit better. How's this everybody? Hi Chantel, am I still shiny? I should be good. Chantel, can you just give me a yes or no on the lighting situation? Nope, still shiny. Looks good, okay, great. So we're almost ready. It's uh, just a few minutes shy of four o'clock. And, oh, <laughs> I'm getting texts telling me I don't look shiny now, so that's good. All right, so we're gonna get started here. I just wanna arrange my nose ring. Mm. I hope you all are doing really well today and that this week number 537 of being home is making you guys have some good time to reflect on yourself and all the things that is important to you in life. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So I want, while uh, people are joining, I just want to let everyone know kind of what is on my skin. Um, and of course, and what we're going to see today. <clears throat> so right now um, I just have on a little bit of strobe cream, a little bit of natural radiance on my skin to start. And then I did do my foundations because we're going to really focus on eyes today. Uh, but I am tried and true with my Pro Long Wear Concealer. And is the sound okay, everybody, as well? Everyone can hear me okay? It's very interesting to do this on your laptop instead of on a phone. It's so cool. Anyway, so um, I use Pro Long Wear Concealer, and I actually mix two shades. I use a little bit of uh, NW20 and NC15. And I just use that with my 170 brush. This is one of my favorite brushes to use. I love it because it's got a really nice sort of cushiony domed uh, edge and it really gives almost like an airbrush effect to the skin. So that's where we started. And so what I'm gonna do now is start with my eyes and you'll notice as well, I've done one eyebrow. So you can see the difference that that does to the face. I try really hard when I do smoky eyes to wait to do brows till the end because I don't want it to look like kind of the um, Montagues and the Capulets are fighting it out on my eye. I want I want the focus of the eyeshadow to be the thing that people see the most. And so I don't want the eyebrow to be overpowering. So a lot of times I will wait until the end, but I wanted you to see the difference that it makes uh, just with a little tiny bit of powder through the eyebrow and how much more definition and um, uh, shape I get and framing of the eye. Um, I just use a little bit of Omega eyeshadow with a 266 brush. And again, I will show you that technique on the other eye when we finish my, my eye makeup. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to use a little bit of our Prep and Prime 24 hour eye base or eye cement. Thank you. Oh, hi, Leslie. Oh my God, that's exciting. Um, just a little teeny bit. You don't need a lot. That's actually way too much that I put on my, my finger, but you can see that's just a clear sort of putty colored product. And I'm just going to grab my mirror here and I'm just going to use, I'm going to dab it on a little bit. I'm going to use my ring finger to kind of blend it out. And I want to say, I want to do, sorry, I do want to let you all know that Chantel is going to be, you'll see Makeup by Chantel M. She's actually going to be uh, recording all of the products that I'm using as I'm using them. So that really gives us a, 
gives you all just a nice running sort of list of the products being used. So this is 24 hour eye base. I'm just using it, hi Jake, uh, on my eyelid. And I'll tell you, using this product, especially uh, being, you know, over 40, and you know, I don't really have a lot of time. I'm very, I'm a very busy person. I mean, right now, obviously, we're all kind of working from home. But when I do my makeup, I basically have the time I have in the morning to put it on, and that is that is it. I don't really go back and judge my makeup too much, except for lips. So I really need my eyeshadow to lock in place, and that's why the 24-hour eye cream is sort of like my ride or die. I use it pretty much every time I do makeup. Um, and it also allows me to use things like eye coals, which will be the next step of this makeup. Um, and a lot, they move a lot. And so the 24 hour eye base actually kind of locks it in. It's almost like a Velcro or a primer that really helps to hold that product and that eye color, uh, in place and also give you a really true sort of uh, payoff of color. The other thing too, when you're using primers is the reason why they are so helpful is that they make the texture all the same. So you're going to get a consistent color payoff and a consistent look with all of your products. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a little bit of feline pencil. Now, feline pencil is an eye coal. Um, you could use smolder if you like smolder. That works. You could use any black eye pencil. You could actually use dark brown eye pencil too. So if you like a softer or more natural kind of smoky eye, you could use Teddy. You could use Costa Riche. You could use Prunella, which I think we still make. So any of those products will work. Because this is a, a smoky eye, I... Um, It is not pre-recorded. This is me talking to you right now <laughs> at 4.03 on the 5th of May. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and come right into my lash line. Now, I sharpened this pencil before we started. But one of the things I think is very important when you do a smoky eye is to get a lot of depth at the lash line. So you will see that I am working this product right into where my eyelashes come out of my eyes. And that's where I want it to be really dark. Now, you could also do this with a liquid liner, with a brush black, with a paint pot in black track. Any product like that will work. I just like the idea of having some time to play. I'm gonna be able to, um, to talk about what I'm doing and have time to blend. Blend it, and so using an eye coal really gives me that opportunity. Plus, I am kind of into like things that are perfectly imperfect. I don't, I don't get too wrapped up in the technical stuff unless I'm doing something very graphic. And today we are really working on sort of a smoky, sexy kind of lived-in eye. So again, just using either feline or smolder at your root. I don't want too much pencil. I'm just gonna use enough to kind of stain my eyelid. So I'm gonna take it up a little bit higher. And again, remember that it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, yes, I mean, I just, I think we get really, you know, it's easy to kind of tell yourself you can't do something before you start to try to do it, instead of just going for it. So just go for it. If it if you mess up, it's okay. It's makeup. That's the beauty of makeup. It's one of the reasons why I love it so much because I make a lot of mistakes in life and makeup allows me to remove them uh, pretty easily. So um, so this is a 239 brush. And actually, not to talk about next week's class, but next week's class, I'm going to spend a lot more time on brush mechanics and why I choose the brushes that I choose for the makeup that I'm going to do. But I will go through th some of that today as well. Now, you'll notice that this brush is kind of flat in shape and it has a rounded point or a rounded edge to it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the brush upside down and I'm just gonna come in and just sort of work it down into my lashes and then up to sort of softly blend that black eye pencil. So I'm flipping the brush now and I'm twirling it the opposite direction and just sort of using a stippling or padding motion, you'll notice, like a finger almost. And I'm just sort of working that color up towards my crease. You don't really need to take it all the way up into the crease. It sort of depends on your eye shape. I have a fairly small eyelid. 
So I don't need to go super high. My brow bone is a little bit more pronounced. You can see sort of when you look at me from a profile, this part of my eye sort of protrudes a little bit. Using black there will make it go back and will make it recede. But I'm, I don't want it to be so dark. I feel like that's a little bit too dramatic for the look I'm going for today. So I'm, I want these to be wearable, smoky eyes for you. I want them to not feel so editorial, but feel more like everyday user friendly. And so I'm now using the brush. I've used it three ways. I've used it upside down to tap in. I, now I'm using it sort of like perpendicular, sort of like this, to sort of soften out those edges. And so the black goes from very black into kind of a soft gray. Y'all can see that. It's almost like a stain on my eye. You see the difference? So you get a hard line here, and then you have this sort of soft fade. And I'm just using the brush perpendicularly on my eye and working it back and forth. Okay? So again, I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye really quickly. And I think the beauty of the eye coal is that it's a bit nomadic. <laughs> it takes a little bit of a trip on the face. It moves around, it's, uh, it's fluid. And you can see, see how this hooked on my eye a little bit? Okay, so that starts to change the shape of what's happening here. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is take a clean brush and I'm gonna use a little tiny bit of fast response eye cream on it. I think maintaining your makeup as you're doing it is very important. So I'm gonna use, you could also use your foundation brush, but it's such a small amount uh, and it's black. I don't want that in my foundation. So I'm gonna use a, 252 brush with a little bit of fast response eye cream and all I'm gonna do is just come right in here and clean this up and you notice how quick and easy that just removed that black and that's it easy peasy really quick and fast so we're just going back in I'm just gonna work the black pencil I'm using feline you can use smolder I couldn't find my smolder pencil today, so I'm using feline, but smolder is, is king for this as well, or queen, depending. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's okay that they're not like super duper the same because we're gonna put eyeshadow over top of them. So now what I'm gonna do is do the same kind of idea, but I'm gonna use a green pencil. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the eyeshadow that I'm gonna use is called Starry Night. And the eyeshadow that I'm using is duochromatic. So you're going to see a little bit of nuance in how this product changes depending on what's underneath it. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit in the inner corner of my eye here. Okay, there it is. Now we're going to use minted eye coal. This is very green, kind of shimmery, really beautiful. And I'm going to come under my eye. And again, you could do this exact same thing with the feline. You could do it with Smolder. You could do it with Teddy, any color you want. I am someone who really likes color. I'm not afraid of color, obviously. You can tell by my cute guitar earring and my purple hair and sort of all the color that's behind me in this room. Color makes me feel happy. It makes me feel really alive and like I'm expressing myself in some way. And so I like to surround myself in color, including with my makeup. But if you're not that person, it's totally fine. Use black or gray or brown and you will get a beautiful result. So now I'm using the 219 brush, which looks like a little pencil, if you guys can see that. And I'm just using it to blend and buff out. This brush is really great when you're doing any kind of sort of uh, blending or smoking out of the eye. Okay. So there you go. Now I've got my, my base happening for my eye. If you wanna go even further, you can take another brush, which is the 224. And this brush is different than the 239, as you guys can see. Some people don't understand why you would choose one brush over another. This one is more like a fingertip. It's better for packing things and stippling things. This brush is a little bit more like a cat's tail. It's gonna be better for fluffing and, and blending. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gently sort of Work that pencil on the top. I'm working it into the natural shape of my eye. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit. 
All right, and now we're ready for some eyeshadow. So the eyeshadow I'm going to use is called Starry Night. And you can see in here, it just sort of looks like a brown, but there's more to meet, more than meets the eye with this eyeshadow. The other thing I'm gonna show you is that it also lives in our art library palette. So if you have this, this is called um, It's Designer. And this comes with lots of fun colors. So I was gonna show it to you in the palette, but I wanted you to realize that even if this particular product, um, I made some mascara, that's why this yellow is here. Um, even if, if you love this eyeshadow, but this palette seems like too much for you, you can buy it as a single. You don't have to have, to have the whole palette. I love the palette personally for many reasons, but it comes both ways. So I'm gonna go ahead with my, again, picking up my 239 brush, which is the original brush we used. I'm going into the eyeshadow. Again, this is called Starry Night. And all I'm gonna do is come in and just tap this on. I hope you guys can see. Now, you may notice that this has some shimmer in it. It has this beautiful kind of, almost like a cicada or like a beetle wing kind of feeling. It's sort of a warm brown with a green overtone. And that may start to make more sense as to why I used green under my eye uh, with the minted eye coal. So as you can see, this is starting to give some dimension to that black. How's that looking, everyone? I hope it looks okay. I hope you're, you're getting the idea here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you'll notice too that I'm tapping this on. I'm not going in and like working my brush feverishly back and forth. The brush already had a little bit of pencil on it, which is gonna help with fallout. One of the biggest concerns people have with smoky eyes is they end up with a bunch of eyeshadow underneath or falling out. And the problem is, is that it that happens all the time. It's powder, it, it kind of goes everywhere. So I'm gonna try to, to minimize that by one, using a brush that already has a little bit of product in it, and two, by packing this on as opposed to going back and forth. And you'll notice that I still will have a little bit of fallout, but it'll be much more manageable. And I can clean all of that at the end using my foundation brush. So as you can see, this is just a really beautiful kind of greeny brown. It's like almost like patinaed or like it's coppered or oxidized. And I, I'm just in love with that. I'm gonna do the exact same thing underneath my eye. So again, going back in with the same brush that I used, this is the brush that I blended the minted eye coal with underneath my eye. I'm going into the same eyeshadow, Starry Night, 220, uh, sorry, 219 brush. And I'm gonna come under my eye and I'm gonna press, 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 press. Now we'll see as we get to the end if I wanna add back in my waterline. It's a very 80s thing to do, you know? It's a very sexy sort of, even a 90s thing, it's sort of grunge. Um, if you're a 90s makeup person, late 90s really. I think there was a huge kind of like backlash to all the colors of the 80s when we kind of burst into the scene on the 90s. It was a very natural kind of paired back. Everything was sort of neutral. It's when Mac really came onto the scene and they had all these sort of nude tones. And so um, things started to evolve as we got uh, later into the 90s. But how far do you pack that? So I'm going to keep it in everybody's eyes a little bit different. But because I have this natural crease in my eye, you can see where my eye actually creases. That's about how far I'm gonna bring it up. And then I'm gonna use a brush to sort of push the shadow uh, into my crease. And I'm gonna use a soft brown to do that. So the, the challenge is when you look at my eye and this color compared to my skin tone, um, it's a very hard reach <laughs> from this to this to blend that. That is really hard to do. So what you wanna do is add a middle color. So this is, I always call this my fader color or my mid-tone, and that's gonna help me. It's, it's a good bridge. It bridges the gap between this sort of whiteness of my skin and the intensity of the eyeshadow. This color is called Teta Tint. You know, here's the beautiful thing about Starry Night, and any color that's a bit blackened or dirty is that it works on all skin tones. So if you're as fair as I am, you can use it because it's grounded and it looks like it's lived in on the skin. And if you are a deep 
chestnut colored skin, dark, warm, rich tones, you can wear the same exact color. And that's sort of the beauty of, of um, doing smoky eyes. So I'm gonna go back in now. We talked about the 224 already. This is one of my all time favorite must have brushes because it's just, it's so great at doing so many things, but the thing it does the best is blend. And for me, tools and the right tools are the essential part of a good makeup. So you'll notice I twirled this into the shadow and then tapped it out because I wanna get that excess powder out, right? Now, the other thing we wanna do is as we start, everyone's always not sure where to place their crease color. Obviously we're going in the crease, but what I wanna tell you as a good guide is if you look straight ahead and you look at the iris of your eye, which is the colored part here, and you'll have to excuse me because the mirror is above uh, my computer. I wanna look at that and kind of go towards the end of where the colored part of my eye is. And I'm just gonna kind of give myself a little guide right there. So you'll notice that I'm just sort of pressing a dot right there. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this eye. And that's my guide. Wherever your brush hits first is where the color is always gonna be the most intense. So you have to kind of plan a little bit. You know, people always ask me like, what are the rules of makeup? There really aren't any except blending and having a little bit of an intention about where you're going with your makeup. So I also too uh, love to just take off any excess product. I'll use a Kleenex or a towel and I'm gonna come in here and now I'm gonna move this color around. So if you are someone who has a lot of brushes, you could use one brush to apply and one brush to blend. I do that a lot, but I'm trying to keep my brush usage slightly more minimal today. I don't want you guys to feel overwhelmed that you have to have every single solitary brush. You don't, you just need the right tools to accomplish the look you want. So you can notice how this is just moving back and forth. And the warm tones from the starry night are actually melting with the tete -a tint And it's creating all this beautiful dimension and I'm doing barely any work. That's, that's what we want, right? So the other thing too, I feel like my eyes are a little bit small. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. And you'll notice just by working the color that I have and pulling it out slightly, just pulling it out, it starts to elongate the eye. The other thing I can do is I'm tricking the eye and creating more of an intense shadow in the inner corner of my eye under my brow. So then I start to connect that and I'm creating almost like it's almost like a diagonal shape. It's coming into the inner corner and then kind of following my brow bone and working straight out. And you'll notice a difference how this eye looks versus this eye because I've created a shadow that's making everyone else that's looking at my face, be giving them the illusion that my eye is longer. All right, same thing on this side. Here we go, here we go. And again, I'm just, I am trying to boss this eyeshadow around. I am telling this eyeshadow where I want it to go. I'm not adding a ton more product. I just want to move what's already there. Going back into my Teta Tint, just so you guys can see. And I took this out of my palette. It does come in a single eyeshadow as well. And we do make these little, pro, um, little four by four. So you could buy like a quad of shadows if you wanted to. Do your brow color, your lid color, your crease color, your highlight and then you're good to go. So that's it. There she is. So now we've already got our smoky eye happening. And you all can see that it's just giving us a little bit of sexiness. And you'll notice with each thing that I add, it slightly changes the makeup. All right. Just gonna take a look in my big mirror. The other thing too is when you're doing your makeup, you wanna step back a little bit. You wanna look at yourself in a full length mirror because when we start, I, I use a mirror like this. And when you're in a mirror like this all the time, it's hard to get perspective. How many people are really gonna be that close to you? So, all right. And then I, if I want to, I can come in with, again, with my 219 brush. It's the same brush we use underneath the eye. I'm gonna pick up my Teta Tint with that brush and I'm just gonna gently melt that starry night into my skin on the bottom. Now, this may be a step you wanna omit, and that's totally fine. I will pass no judgment on you for that. I know that I can pull it off and I can wear it. Some people get very nervous about doing something messy under their eye. 
It's interesting to me because that tight line, although beautiful and very graphic and technical, looks good. Sometimes it can actually like make the eye look really hard. And as we get a little bit older, sometimes this is a little bit better around the eye than a hard line. So that's why I tend to do things that are a little more blendy, a little bit more lived in, because even though I'm wearing, you know, a, a color, there's a statement happening here. It's not so harsh in the fact that it's like I took a, you know, a marker and drew a hard line there. It's actually really soft and blended and kind of melts into my skin. The other trick is that you want to really understand the bones that you're working with and like your features that you're working with. So if your eye shape turns down a little bit and you notice that as you're following your natural eye shape, it makes it more intense, like they're kind of just looking sad, just, just stop it a little bit short of your natural eye line and then work upwards. And then it's going to give you a lift on the eye instead of looking like your eyes are going down. It's the same thing with when you're trying to decide how far down you can come underneath your eye. Your eyeshadow, sorry, your eyelashes actually create a natural shadow, especially when they have mascara on them. So that's about how far you can come down without really looking like, you know, you're, dare I say, Tom Brady on game day, uh, <laughs> like you got black under your eye. You really can, you really can play with that space a little bit and don't be afraid of it especially if you're using kind of a soft shadowy color because it just adds a little bit of sexiness uh, and it, it doesn't deter or take away from how you look. And if you've got the 24 hour eye base on, it's gonna lock into place. So what I'm gonna do at this point, just for a little temperature check, this is my foundation brush that I used earlier before I came on my live and I'm just gonna use it and kind of clean up under my eye. It has a little bit of foundation on it and that's going to be my best friend as far as cleaning up. And you'll also notice that I'm pulling out, ooh, look at that, pulling out this shape and elongating and extending my eye shape slightly. So then again, I, I create more of an almond-shaped eye. That's just my preference, okay? So if you guys have any questions, be sure to put them in the box. Hopefully I'm explaining things pretty well so that you feel like you're getting everything you need. But I'm going to go ahead and start to fill in my eyebrow a little bit. So again, I'm using, this is just a little quad that I use out of my makeup kit for eyebrows. And I'm going to use Omega, which is this shade right here. I know it seems really light, <laughs> but trust me, I already have a lot of color in my eyebrow. Omega right here. Um, and so I'm going to comb it up just a little bit. This is just a toothbrush. It's actually used for like wig hair, I believe. But toothbrushes work great. Mascara wands work great whatever you need for your eyebrow. And I am gonna come in and just draw kind of a line where my eyebrows naturally occur. I'm just adding some depth at the bottom. Okay. One of the things I love about using palettes for things is you can dip and dab and create all different kinds of colors that are customized for you. I have some gray in my eyebrows and I normally wear glasses that are very large so that you can't see my eyebrows so I don't have to do them. But I know in this case, because we're really focusing on the eyes, I just want to show you, I learned how to do uh, my eyebrows with this brush, which is the 266. And the magic of this brush is that it actually will draw a straight line for you. It's pretty magical. So we use this a lot for eyelining and then we also use it a lot for brows. And you can see how nicely that framed my eye, even though I use this very, very soft color. It made a huge difference. And it also took out some of those grays that are in my brows. And I'm just gonna come in and just kind of finish the tail on this side. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna put on, um, I'm gonna curl my lashes first. I think curling lashes is very important. A lot of people get very nervous about curling the lash. But a few little tricks I can give you is to just gently set your eyelashes in here and and then you're gonna look in towards your nose. So I get all the ends in and I'm gonna gently squeeze and make sure I'm not pinching myself anywhere. And once I know I'm safe to go, I'm just gonna do a nice hard pinch. And then you'll notice that my eyelashes are nice and curled up and I use my fingers to just separate them out a little bit. I'll do the same thing on this eye. Just cradle those eyelashes in there and squeeze and squeeze it out. And then separate them slightly with your fingertips. Now, 
There's a lot of different mascaras. Everyone has a favorite. My favorite has always been the uh, extended play mascara. I think that was probably backwards. This mascara is really cool because it's warm water washable, but it's also waterproof. So I have, I'm kind of lazy. And at the end of the night, I want my makeup to come off really fast. So this product is genius for that. But it also really withstands the day. Uh, it doesn't really get into my concealer. It just, I don't know, it just makes my eyelashes come alive. And some people who have uh, thinner lashes or have shorter lashes, maybe Extreme Dimension would be a better product for you. Um, but for me, the, the tininess of this wand, and also because of the mass of my eyelashes, this keeps me from having, what did I get on my eye? Uh, I did something up here. You can, I don't know if you guys can see this. I got to clean that. I don't know how I do that, but I get makeup everywhere. Haha. <laughs> so I'm going to just come in and do my bottom lashes first because when I do my top lashes first and then look up to do my bottom lashes, I will get mascara everywhere, which I seemed to do anyway. So bear with me. I'm just going to grab a Q-tip here. Here's the thing. <laughs> when you have mascara that does this, see that? I don't know if you guys can see all that. Just let it sit for a second. It comes off much easier if it's dry than if it's wet. If it's wet and you try to clean it up, it's going to move and streak and smear sh everywhere, and then you're going to have a bigger mess. So just let it sit. Take a moment. Do something else. I'm going to come in and start doing my top lashes, and you'll notice I come into the root, and I just start to wiggle it out, wiggle it back and forth. And I use this wand because it is so small. I'm able to really separate and coat each lash. And this is gonna change the makeup. For me, mascara is kind of the magic wand of makeup. It really changes things, it brings things together. And you guys can probably notice the difference between my two eyes now that I have mascara on this one and no mascara on this one. Thank you, Chantel, for getting my questions. I'm sorry, I'm kind of like knee deep. Hooded eyes, well, I think using a soft, Mid-tone color is a really good thing to do for your eyelid. It doesn't have to be super dark. It doesn't have to be super light. I think it should be a mid-tone color with a very soft sheen to it. Vex is always one of my favorites for that. Um, we have a whole bunch of new eyeshadows in those mid-tone ranges that I think would look great. And then a ton of mascara and a very soft line underneath the eye is probably gonna give you exactly what you need. Fill in those eyebrows. And then focus on you know a feature like giving yourself a beautiful skin, beautiful cheek, just so you can look really finished. It's kind of hard for me to tell you exactly without seeing you, which at some point hopefully we'll be able to do something maybe more personal for these lessons. And I can tell you more specifically. Okay, so now I look alive because I have mascara on and it's hard to always know how big my lashes are because they actually uh, are kind of light. But I'm gonna go ahead now and clean up this mascara mess that I made. Okay, so you can see how quickly that just went away. I don't have anything on this Q-tip. I'm just whisking away the dried mascara. Oh, yes. Well, I love that about lash extensions. I have never had, fortunately, haven't had to have lash extensions. Um, so I'm going to let Chantel handle that for now. And what I'm going to do next is use a little bit of pigment. I can't ever do any makeup without pigment. This is a uh, white pigment. You could also use vanilla. You could use tan. You could use rose, any color you want. I'm going back in with my 219. Now, I have a clean one here because that's the magic of television, but if you don't have a clean one, and you only have one of these brushes, totally fine. You can just go in on a terry cloth towel, I have one right here, and just clean the color out. And just dry brush it clean. And then you can use this brush, which I'm actually gonna do. How about that? I just cleaned it, why not? So I'm just gonna pick up a little tiny bit of my white pigment. 
and I'm going to come in just to the inner corners of my eye. So here's the thing. I have kind of close set eyes and you probably noticed as I put that starry night on my eye that my eyes felt like they got a little bit closer together. That is the magic of contouring and putting things uh, dark <laughs> and it draws things together. So by adding a little bit of light in here, I'm just helping to rebalance the appearance of my eyes. Obviously I haven't changed my eye shape or the spacing of my eye technically because I can't do that without surgery. Um, but adding white in here just helps to open up that eye a little bit. And there's just a little bit of shimmer in here. I'm gonna, again, go in with my ring finger and I'm just gonna tap in and press this in so it feels like it's living in my skin as opposed to sitting on top. And I think that's another really important aspect of doing makeup is that sometimes you want it to sort of feel artificial and feel like it's, I work in editorial and fashion. So a lot of times we want things to look like makeup or an accessory on the face. But when you're a regular woman who's just wearing her makeup all day, you want to have a little bit more like subtlety. And I did a, I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but I did a post a couple weeks ago about how subtlety is not always my forte. I tend to be more of a bull in the china shop kind of gal, uh, a little bit awkward, kind of well-meaning. Um, but, you know, it's okay to have some subtlety. And I think adding a little bit of color and then going in with your finger and kind of pressing it in really helps to sort of put things in perspective. So that just opened up my eye a little bit. I'm just gonna blend that a little bit softer. I don't wanna I don't want to be able to see where things actually begin and end. I want it to be blended and soft and kind of cascade from one color to another. So again, I'm just gonna come in and just softly blend that white pigment. And I use such a little amount. Now what's beautiful about a product like this is you can use it in so many different ways. You know, I could come in and just kind of like Rub a little bit here on the top lip and on the bottom lip. And then suddenly I've highlighted my cupid's bow. You could highlight the, the center of your face. You can highlight your cheekbones. I'm going to use another product for that, um, but you could do it. And it's, it's a very intense product. If you are darker skinned, I would say probably go more towards a vanilla or um, even something like motif would be beautiful or using one of our uh, extra dimension skin finishes would be beautiful as well. Okay. So I'm going to move on to my cheeks. Now we have some options. Everybody, I love options. I can use my old favorites, which are the uh, sculpting shape palette, or I could use a little bit of brown paint stick. What do you guys want to see? Brown paint stick. This is the brown paint stick. Kind of intense. I'm just going to show you this just for fun. Just a little bit right here. I don't want a lot of this product, but the color is so good and it can be used on like a whole scope of people. So this product is a, a creamy based, high color payoff emollient product. And because my foundation has a little time to set in, it's not gonna disturb my foundation. Look at that. Oh, is she like amazing? So when you're looking at your placement and where you're putting it, you wanna start by the tragus of your ear, which is this little flap right here. And you'll notice if you stick your finger in front of it that your cheekbone actually hooks there. So that's where you wanna start. And then we're gonna push the color forward. And you usually use about a two finger width from the edge of your mouth to where you want your contour to stop. And that's just a good basic rule of thumb. It's not a die hard fast rule or anything. It's just a way to kind of give you a guideline. And again, I'm using a 168 brush right now, which is angled. It's a great brush for getting into the hollows of the cheek. Some people like to suck in. That makes a really weird shape on my face. I don't want that. I want it to look a little more natural. I want it to look a little bit more like it's hugging the natural cheekbone that I have. And you're gonna notice when I take my hair down on this side, that's a great question about high cheekbones. It depends, you don't have to. If you already have great cheekbones and they already are protruding, 
you can just leave them and you actually just add a little highlight to sort of balance them out if you want to. Um, I think that's probably the best way to handle it. I unfortunately don't have that, Leslie. <laughs> so I have to shape my face a little bit. Plus I've been eating a lot of snacks during this quarantine. So I'm gonna just come in to my uh, jawline and use whatever's left on this brush and just kind of pull down that contour to give myself a little bit more of a, a chiseled jaw. Now. I could go back in with my paint stick and add more, or I could go in with my favorite palette. You'll notice it's my favorite because there's a big hole in it. Obviously I haven't been able to get to the store to get a new one, but I'm gonna go in with the same brush and pick this up and just kind of lightly set that. So cream over powder is always gonna give you a little bit more wearability, a little bit more of a lasting intensity. And I find that if people, you know, some people say to me like, my makeup, my face eats makeup, my skin, it, I put it on and five minutes later it looks like it's gone. Well, this is a great way to make it last longer. Using a primer, using a self-setting foundation, and as you get to be a little bit more mature and your skin changes, sometimes using products that are self-setting can be really advantageous because then you don't have to put too much power powder on top of them. Yes, I'm using powder makeup or cosmetic products, but I don't have to use a lot of setting powder. And that keeps the skin looking fresher and a little bit more uh, youthful. So I'm going in here. Oh, thank you, that's very nice. Um, I wish that was the case. You guys did not see me without any makeup on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of Glow Play blush just to kind of pull this together. And one of my favorite ways to apply the Glow Play, if you guys follow me a lot, you'll notice I use the Beauty Blender a lot for this product. Sometimes when you're using a brush, because of the texture of the Glow Play, um, and I'm gonna show it to you, it's sort of spongy. So it bounces when you touch it, and it's very, very sheer in its color payoff. So what I'm gonna do, and again, because my eyes are the biggest feature here on this makeup, I want the rest of the skin to be pretty soft. So I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna just, Bob Ross, a little cheek in here. I'm just gonna do a happy little, and I'm sorry, this color is called Cheeky Devil. And I'm just gonna bounce it in. You'll see I'm just, I'm gonna do it a little bit more intensely so you can see. I'm also smiling a little bit so I know where to place the color. I don't want it to just sit on top of my contour. I want it to kind of all melt together. These totally work on oily skin, uh, they, they really do. And the other thing you can do with them too is just bounce a little bit. I love, this is kind of a 70s move to bounce a little bit into the cheekbone, but I think it just brings the makeup together. I don't do a lot of contouring on my forehead. As you notice, it's quite small. It's pretty much a three head, not a forehead. I don't, I have a very small amount of space between my eyebrows and my hair. So I don't do a lot of contouring on my forehead but I will take a little bit of the blush color and I will just take it up over the arch of my eyebrows and I feel like it just lifts the face a little bit. Now, if you get too much on, again, we go back in with our, tr whoops, our trusty foundation brush and I'm just gonna tap out the edges so that it feels like it's living underneath the skin and not on top. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I hope this is making sense and that you all are enjoying the tutorial. I'm gonna go in now with just a little tiny bit of, of strobe cream. Now, I did put some strobe cream on earlier uh, underneath my foundation, but just to intensify, if you all like a highlight and you're feeling like you don't like to do powder highlights, you don't wanna to be too disco, too shimmery, you can use a little tiny bit. Thank you for the thumbs up. I'm just gonna use the palm of my thumbs, the sort of meaty part of my thumb here, and I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna just press a little bit of this product. This is that strobe cream, and strobe cream is just, it's just beautiful. I feel like um, Chantel and myself and Lynn, my friend Lynn and my other friend Fatima, like we have really rediscovered strobe cream and realized how beautiful it is, especially for those Zoom calls when you're just are like having a day where you don't want to put anything on, but you need your skin to just look like it has like a filter on it. This is the product you want to buy. If you are a lighter skin tone, you could use pink, you could use silver, you could use peach. If you are a darker skin tone, you could use the red, you could use the peach or the gold. Um, and those are sort of my, my favorites. And you'll notice, you can just keep adding it on and it really never gets to be too much. It just makes the skin come alive. 
but I would never be me if I didn't add one more layer. So this is Light Scapade, and you'll notice that this is sort of a melange of colors. It's got like a baby blue and a gold and a peach and a pink. Really, really beautiful, really wearable. Going in with a 240 brush right now. It's the larger size. So 224 is its kid sister. This is its, its big sister. And I love this, two, this, this duo here. Um, for, then I love this brush for placement of um, powder and also for highlight. So what I'm gonna do here is just come in and just go right over top of where I put the strobe cream, just to intensify that a little bit. You can notice it just gives me a little kick. Just makes it a little bit of like a ping. And then I can use a bit of it under the brow. This is a wash. Again, no hard lines. Do a little bit on the side of my nose. Come back in on my lip. I love the Cupid's bow. I will highlight her till the cows come home. Mm. Cows come home. All right, sorry, I'm being a dork. Okay, so you get me and doing makeup too long and all kinds of weird things come out of my mouth. We'll do um, a little bit of lip. This is a stripped down lip pencil. She's a kind of a must have, especially if you're a lighter skin tone. She, um, I'm just looking for my mirror, here she is. Um, she is a neutral color. I'll show you a little bit of my hand so you can see. If you don't have this, you could use spice, you could use plum, you could use um, stone, it's one of my favorites. But I really like stripped down because I'm gonna, there's, the eyes are such a big focus, I'm gonna keep the lips a little bit more neutral. Um, I'm gonna come in and start with my Cupid's bow. Sometimes I like to take my pencil after it's been sharpened and just squeeze the tip a little bit. And what that does is sort of flattens out the pencil. It makes it more like a carpenter's pencil. It gives it more of a square kind of a feeling. And that really helps to blend and to get the nice sort of um, detailing around the corners of the mouth. So I'm gonna come in. I was talking to my friend Laura the other day about lips and she's like, I know you like to make four quadrants. I listen to your videos, <laughs> which is exactly right. So. You can see that I just did a little bit here and here on the Cupid's bow, shaping that. Did a little bit on the bottom, and now I'm just gonna connect it. Just makes it so much easier. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into the box now, because I need to stop talking for a second. And I'm just gonna connect that. Hope you can see. I feel like Chantel, poor Chantel, she's gonna have to carpal tunnel by the time we're done with all these products, but. They're so versatile, and I, I'm really trying to keep the products that I'm showing you. If you all were here for last week, I used Teta Tint, and I wanted to show you a different way. It's the same way you're using it, but with different eyeshadows. And it's a crazy to me when I look at this eye that this is literally two eyeshadows. That's all that I have there, two eyeshadows and a pigment and a pencil. I sprayed Fix Plus on the Beauty Blender. Great question. If you all are not familiar with Fix Plus, it is a hydration product. It's a water-based product that has a little bit of chamomile and green tea in it. It has setting properties. So if you like your makeup to be set at the end, you can use it for that. You can use it to bring the makeup, make it look alive again and refresh it. I also like it before I put moisturizer on. Um, I use it also sometimes to wet my brushes if I need more intensity out of my shadow. It's just, it's a must have. It's a makeup artist lover. Like if you are if you're a makeup artist or a makeup enthusiast, Fix Plus is really like, it's a must have. All right, so I'm just filling in my lips a little bit. I think I made this side a little high. So all you gotta do if you do that, hey, we all make mistakes, take your ring finger and go down like that. Never go up, never go to the side because you're gonna get into your makeup and then just come back in and redraw it. There we go. That's better. And the pencil, because I, I squished it, I can just easily blend that pencil into my, onto my lip. All right, now I'm gonna use a little bit of Deco A Go Go. This was a gloss that came out with Loud and Clear. Uh, it's so pretty, it's like a peachy, sheer peach color. Really neutral, works really well on lots of different skin tones. And again, if you are a little bit deeper than me, you could use cork, you could use chestnut, you could use mahogany. I'm just trying to keep my lips neutral but finished. 
and I felt like this color would give me like a nice finish, but not overpower the eyes. Again, the concept is to build a little bit of balance. So if my eyes are the focus, we want the eyes to be the focus and everything else sort of just support it. It should be like this, the, the supporting cast, but the main actor uh, is, is the eye. So we want the eye to stand out and everybody else just helps to support it and make it look more finished. The last thing I'm gonna do is use a little bit of our Prep and Prime um, highlighter pen. This is Radiant Rose. And I love this because we all know that even with the quarantine, sometimes your sleep patterns are off and you can look a little tired or heavy under the eye. And what's important sometimes is not concealing, but color correcting. And so I've already concealed out. I already used my concealer there when I did my foundation. So now what I wanna do is color correct. So I'm using a little bit of this pink. We also make it in a yellow. So if you tend to have a bit more of a purpley color under your eye, you wanna use something called Light Boost, which is a bit more yellow. We have um, Bright Forecast, which is a bit more of a peach. So if you have a blue undertone under your eye, you wanna use a peach. If you are a darker skin tone, you would use Peach Luster, which is a deep peach. And that really helps to take away any kind of darkness under the eye in a darker skin tone. And then this Radiant Rose, is just it just works perfectly on my skin because I have that kind of pinky, goldy fairness that makes it hard to, to not, I don't wanna use white, but I need to use something that's gonna brighten under there. And that really does the trick. Okay, so now I'm going to take my hair down. And I think I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of black inside my eye. I want you all to see the difference between using black inside the eye and not using black inside my eye. You'll notice too, when you bring the hair down, it definitely adds more of a shadow on the face. So you have to be mindful of that too. Um, I'm gonna go in now. This is again, my smolder or your feline pencil, whichever you prefer to use. I'm gonna put a little tiny puff on my, on my hand so I don't mess up my foundation. But I'm just gonna come in here and like a good girl from, who graduated in the 80s from high school, I'm just going to add black inside my eye. And <laughs> the trick is you wanna get it up here too. So you can transfer it just by blinking your eye a little bit. Now look how much more intense that made that. Really finished the look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye as well because now all you see is that white space, right? So it's really important when you make the decision to do this that you're actually going into between your eyelashes and really working that pencil in there. You may need to even come under. And you can just, dot it. It doesn't have to be like a solid line. You can just come in and add little dots in between your lashes with your pencil. And now it's like uber smoky. And all I did was add black pencil into my eye line because I love Joan Jett. I love rock and roll. That is why. If you can't tell by my cool earrings. <laughs> all right. So I feel like I've completed a smoky eye. Do you guys wanna see it one step further or can we go ahead and just wrap this up? How are we feeling? So I have contacts in, oh, thank you, that's very nice. Um, I just got told I was hot, I'll take it. Um, I have contacts in right now and someone says more. Okay, I'm gonna do something, one, one thing really quickly and then we'll finish because I've already had you guys here almost an hour. Um, this is with contacts, you know, the good thing is you tend to be more um, used to things around your eyes. And, and a lot of times contact wearers tend to um, be, I don't know, more agile around the eye area. But yes, you do have to be careful. I think the biggest thing you have to be careful with is getting powder in your eye. Um, and when you're using, when you're doing uh, water lining like this, is just pull your eye, la eye um when you call this, pull your eye down a little bit so that you're not sticking the pencil into your eye and moving your contact. That's what I was trying to say. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick up my palette, I'm gonna go into Carbon. Carbon is a very black color, it's very dark, 
very intense, but I'm just going to come into the outer corner here and just because it gives me the ability to create just a small amount with a lot of control, but you can start to see that that's adding some more depth to the outer corner of my eye. It's very sweet. All right. And I'm going to do, I'm going to follow underneath. I'm doing this without a mirror, but I know my face pretty well. So you can see that this just intensifies the outer corner a little bit. And again, when you get to a certain age, having a lot of black around the eye can feel very scary. Um, so I like to start small and add more if I need to. But you can see that just adds a little, I don't know, je ne sais quoi, I guess, uh, to the makeup without disturbing what you've done and without getting makeup everywhere. Um, you know, I don't want you all to be fearful of black. Oh, that's a great tip. Thanks, Chantel. Um, don't be afraid of black because black actually grounds color. It makes it really wearable on the skin. I would be more worried about doing a hard line of it than I would be um, about using it mixed in with other shadows. Uh, it may be like a, one of your favorite seasonings, you know, like if salt, if you use too much salt, it can ruin everything. If you use the right amount of it, it makes everything taste amazing. So it's kind of the same thing when you're adding black or adding product uh, to your makeup. Start small and add as you need to go. I, f I find myself always sort of pulling back because it's easier to add more than it is to take away. All right, you all, thank you so much. We, there will be a small survey that will come to you if, you if you are watching this through Splash and you got the email through Mac, uh, you will have the ability to take a survey and let us know what else you wanna see. I am doing another class next week. It's gonna be a little bit more natural, uh, looks for women over 40 and also brush mechanics. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more on skin and a little bit more on just keeping things a little softer, a little more pulled back. But today I wanted to share with you my smoky eyes and I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for tuning in and uh, I really appreciate you all hanging in there with us. Have a great day, stay safe, stay healthy and stay glamorous. Bye.